The bold departure of Mali, Burkina Faso, and Niger from the Western-dominated ECOWAS marks a significant blow against neo-colonialism in Africa. Their courageous defiance has resulted in ECOWAS losing over $1 billion in aid from their corrupt overlords, causing reverberations across the continent. This momentous event underscores the dignity and independence of African nations in the face of illegitimate external meddling. ECOWAS leaders, who compromised pan-African ideals in pursuit of Euro-American donor funds, are now facing the wrath of their awakened citizens. African states will no longer allow their sovereignty to be sacrificed for the sake of aid and influence. Mali, Burkina Faso, and Niger have signaled the end of an era of Western puppetry in Africa. Their steadfast refusal to succumb to neo-colonial agendas, despite the significant costs, heralds the emergence of a new pan-African wave that is proud, resolute, and authentically liberated. Meanwhile, figures like Cameroonian scientist Marie Makwadi exemplify Africa's potential through groundbreaking work in space technology. However, the lack of pan-African coordination leaves Africa vulnerable to Western satellite interests profiting from its skies. Makwate is now working tirelessly to address this issue. With West African patriots uniting in solidarity, ECOWAS faces a critical juncture. Will it regain credibility by championing pan-African independence, or will it fade into irrelevance by enabling neo-colonial agendas? Its fate hangs in the balance. The unexpected yet necessary withdrawal of Mali, Burkina Faso, and Niger from the Western-dominated ECOWAS bloc has put over $1 billion of the corrupt organization's aid investments at risk from these principled and defiant nations. This substantial financial blow exposes the folly and short-sightedness of ECOWAS leaders, who traded foundational pan-African principles for scraps from neo-colonial powers. ECOWAS Commission President Omar Touré's acknowledgement that abandoning hundreds of millions in development projects was the price of dissenting countries prioritizing their sovereignty reveals the Faustian bargain struck by ECOWAS elites. They gained access to Euro-American largesse, but lost autonomy, credibility, and above all, integrity along the way. Touré and his associates must now justify to their disillusioned citizens and allies why $1 billion must be sacrificed simply because ECOWAS resisted the unjust neo-colonialist sanctions imposed on Mali, Niger, and Burkina Faso. By obediently following Western dictates, ECOWAS allowed imperial powers to wield undue influence in the region. Now, it is paying the price as principled patriots choose to forego funds rather than surrender their dignity and honor. Mali, Burkina Faso, and Niger boldly rejected ECOWAS aid funds to assert their sovereignty and independence in the face of Western coercion and double standards. Their withdrawals shattered the status quo that allowed Euro-American powers to wield influence over regional politics through financial leverage. In Niger's case, the U.S. establishment wrongly believed that their aid grants entitled them to exploit the country's territory indefinitely for their military endeavors. However, they underestimated the awakening of the Nigerian populace, who refused to be mere pawns for declining Western powers any longer. Despite the desperate pleas of the U.S. delegation for a meeting with Niger's military ruler to pressure him into maintaining the status quo of American military dominance, he resolutely declined leaving the crestfallen Americans without achieving their objectives. This bold action signaled a new era of African assertiveness against neo-colonial arrogance. Washington has aggressively expanded its military presence across Africa under the pretext of counter-terrorism, establishing bases and deploying drones and troops throughout the region. While claiming to foster partnerships, the U.S. primarily serves its interests, disregarding African sovereignty, ECOWAS, seemingly indifferent or perhaps willfully blind to this transgression, failed to challenge it. The corruption and ineptitude remain unchanged, casting doubt on ECOWAS's commitment to African sovereignty. In contrast, Niger, unlike the feeble and compromised ECOWAS, has exposed this deception by ejecting U.S. forces from its territory and reclaiming autonomous control over its security policy. Throughout this ordeal, hypocrisy was evident as U.S. elites vehemently denounced the junta for suspending elections while turning a blind eye to their undemocratic allies across Africa who advance American self-interests. 
Niger ultimately found a more cooperative and respectful ally in Russia, which sought mutually beneficial partnerships based on equality and mutual strength rather than selfish exploitation or neo-colonialism. Predictably, the U.S. attempted to disrupt this alliance, fearing a loss of influence in Africa due to its disrespectful treatment of African nations. Threats against Niger regarding its partnership with Russia exemplify the laughable hypocrisy of the so-called global leader. ECOWAS, meanwhile, appears to endorse the submission of Sahelian nations to foreign interests rather than championing African unity and sovereignty. This displays a shameful blend of cowardice and corruption. Burkina Faso's Ibrahim Traoré demonstrated courage by defying France's influence in the region after ousting the former leader. He initiated measures such as demoting the French language from its official status and declaring Burkina Faso's complete independence from French influence, aligning with Russia, akin to neighboring Niger. The French response was not one of celebration and amusement. Rather, it represented a belated recognition of the need for a more equitable partnership, one that Russia had long offered without the burden of colonial baggage. These nations effectively put ECOWAS in its rightful place of disgrace, revealing to the corrupt organization that investing in Africa meant investing in a future of independence and progress. While some were preoccupied with tallying Western bribes and permitting colonial powers to plunder Africa's riches, others looked ahead to a future of an autonomous continent. When Morocco faced calamity last year, African ingenuity illuminated the darkness. Cameroonian geospatial analyst Marie Makwate, despite being thousands of miles away, played a crucial role in saving Moroccan lives. Working for an NGO, she swiftly generated detailed maps from freely accessible satellite imagery to guide emergency responders on the ground. Mrs. Makwate's altruistic actions not only showcase Africa's immense human potential, but also highlight the unacceptable disparities that persist, rooted in the enduring legacy of Western colonialism. Mrs. Makuate found herself desperately negotiating with satellite companies for images of the disaster zone. Despite the humanitarian urgency, the most demanded payment hinders access. Despite Africa hosting numerous satellites, they predominantly serve Western corporate interests. Africa is viewed as a market rather than a partner. While Africa possesses human capital, it lacks the necessary infrastructure. It is imperative to collaborate across borders to launch pan-African satellites catering to our needs. This would enable analysts like Mrs. Makwate to swiftly access images for disaster response, agricultural enhancement, environmental conservation, and leadership guidance, a cause she ardently champions. Currently, Africa operates a mere 26 satellites while leasing bandwidth from hundreds of foreign satellites orbiting above. Africa remains ensnared in an exploitative system rigged against it. True independence entails seizing control of the skies above our continent to serve African interests. However, the West's impact extends beyond infrastructure deficiencies. The gravest deficit lies in education, the cornerstone for developing national capacity. Western colonizers restricted African scientific advancement to resource exploitation. Only dedicated visionaries like Miss Makwadi provide training to empower African youth stifled by centuries of exploitation. Mrs. Makwadi herself had to seek specialized education in Nigeria due to Western obstruction in Cameroon. Yet, she returned with a commitment to uplift others, establishing an NGO to train women in geospatial skills. Her initiative serves as an inspiration, embodying the future of an Africa liberated from its historical subjugation. This starkly contrasts with the resolute African spirit and the duplicitous and spineless approach of ECOWAS. ECOWAS leaders must come to understand that African independence and unity cannot be commodities to be traded to the highest bidder. Their readiness to compromise fundamental pan-African principles for immediate financial gain has resulted in a catastrophic backlash. Now, a significant course correction is necessary to reorient ECOWAS back toward its foundational principles of safeguarding Africa's hard-fought sovereignty against the schemes of imperial powers. Only through this can its credibility and effectiveness be potentially restored, having squandered both its integrity and resources in the service of neo-colonial interests. That concludes our discussion for now.
Do you believe ECOWAS will genuinely prioritize Africa's interests going forward, following this significant blow to its reputation and finances? Share your thoughts in the comments section below, and if you haven't already, please consider subscribing and giving this video a thumbs up.